what is up everyone super exciting video for today a lot of you were waiting for this i was waiting for this and i'm happy to say after multiple testing i finally have this out for you so before we get into the tutorial i'm going to tell you guys about the facts and the info and what's happening here and exactly how this is going to work so if you're interested in just the tutorial timestamps are down in the description below or you can skip to here so the HTC Vive Facial Tracker came out a few days back and a lot of people were very unhappy that it would not work with any headsets except for the HTC Vive Pro and the HTC Vive Pro I. Well, you know the VR community, we were not going to let that pass. And with the help of Cass and Cherry, I got the exact dimensions of the facial tracker from the Vive Pro and model of that in Fusion 360 to fit any headset that is not the Vive Pro. So now we have the exact dimensions and an exact mount for any other headset that will bring that Vive tracker to those exact dimensions, making facial tracking work exactly how it's supposed to. And I did post it on Twitter. That Twitter post got a lot of love. So thank you so much to the VR community for spreading that around. And thank you again so much to Cass and Cherry. This would not have been possible without you. But of course, the thing you're all here for, I made it wireless. And I'm gonna guide you guys through exactly how you can make it wireless using nothing but this. Okay, so first of all, huge new benefit of the new mount. I promised you guys I would throw this into this video. Everything fits into the official case. So we've got the Oculus Quest here and the facial tracker also fits in the case. The facial tracker also now has cable management. So huge, huge bonus. And then it just slides right in to the front of the Quest like so and this is the quest mount it's slightly curved but i also made a universal mount for all other headsets now do keep this in mind this facial tracker is not for quest standalone this facial tracker is for pc vr and even when we make it wireless it will still only be for pc vr but let's not wait on any longer let me show you exactly how to make it wireless i don't know what to tell you guys i literally just finished recording this video and I was about to call it a fail video. It's literally uploaded to YouTube as a fail video already. But then I thought, oh my God, wait a second. What if I manually give permissions to the Vive Tracker from Android? And it worked. So I spent five hours recording this video and it didn't work. But I have good news for you guys, who, thanks to the power of editing, don't need to spend that long watching it. I'm leaving in the failed part, but I'm putting it in after the successful part. Because at this point, I won't lie to you, I need that watch time. After what happened today, it's actually so much easier than I thought it was. So, what you guys are going to need is some form of an Android phone. This is a OnePlus 8 Pro, and all you do is you launch the Play Store, you download the virtual here server, this one right here, and then you just open it up and you plug the HTC camera into your phone. Just, just, just like that, literally just like that. And then you download the virtual client onto your PC. That's actually in a tutorial later on. So I'll leave that tutorial in. You can find that right here at this timestamp or you can check out the timestamps down in the description below that's how you get this thing connected to your pc wirelessly it's actually the same procedure as on that your pc will just find this automatically and then you just right click and click connect and it will work but but there's a big but virtual here does not have access to this on your phone so what you want to do is you want to you want to click and hold on virtual here go into app info or go into settings and apps and find the app there go into permissions and give it permissions for camera file and media and microphone then when you plug in the htc camera it works and you have a htc camera and it is so much easier than anything else i could have done i, I tested it it works. So what you want to do then is you just want to take your headset, your HTC mount, and then just put your phone anywhere where that cable will reach. Just like that. Why not? This this seems like a perfectly good idea. Yeah, this, this seems like a great idea. What, what could possibly go wrong here? So now that you have your, uh, your phone in a safe place, it's connected to the the tracker and virtual here server is on 
It's as simple as just putting on the headset and playing your favorite games with face tracking. I'm sorry, guys. I'm way too tired to show you a demonstration. You're just going to have to trust me on the fact that this does work. I now need to re-edit the video and re-upload it again, but this time we're successful. And honestly, I think I should be happy, but I'm just way too tired. I am so happy that I was able to bring a successful resolution to the community and not have to end off on that horrible, horrible note of me being extremely unsatisfied. But yeah, that's that's literally it. That's that's it. That's how simple it is. I would greatly appreciate if you guys watched the failed part of the video in which I actually wanted to genuinely just give up and crawl into a corner and just darkness because I need that watch time after today. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helped you out. We now have a wireless five tracker. Also, I do realize not every phone has type C. And for you guys that have a phone that doesn't have type C, I recommend these little things. They're adapters from type C to micro USB. And that way you can still do OTG with an older device. So yeah, peace. <laughs> Okay, so very quick disclaimer before this video even continues, because this video didn't succeed. When I did my first test, I did all my tests on my Razer Blade 15, meaning I ran my Razer Blade 15 as a network server, and that actually worked no problem whatsoever, but I feel like it's not fair to call that wireless. You know, shoving a laptop into a backpack, putting it on, and calling that wireless wouldn't necessarily be fair on you guys, so I wanted to actually make it wireless. And I do want to put this at the very beginning of the video because I don't want anybody going into this video thinking that we were successful. This video was successful to a certain extent. We did make it wireless, but it didn't really work. And I'll tell you why later on. But if you're going into this video wanting to see a tutorial on how to make the facial tracker wireless, unfortunately, that's not it. If you're going into this video wanting to see the facial tracker wireless, not 100% working, and maybe you think of something that's great. Or if you want to see how happy I am and then the happiness just kind of drops in stages. Or if you want to see how to make wireless USBs, because that does work. But yeah, I, I was not going to make a clickbait video on you guys and tell you, oh my god, I made the facial tracker wireless and then just plug it into my laptop. That's just not how I roll. So instead, I thought I could make it work with this and you'll see what happened there. So. Inside this little box, I have something that I did not know existed until somebody in the comments section co told me about it. So thank you so much for letting me know this exists. For today's purposes, we will be using Virtual Here, which is a virtual server allowing for wireless USB protocols. So what will you require? You're gonna require this little router. It's the GLMT300N V2. And that V2 at the end is very important because there is also a V1. This wasn't very expensive at all. You can find it down in the description below. Don't worry, it's very simple. I'm gonna guide you through this. You'll be fine, don't panic. <laughs> and you will require a USB Type-C to USB Type-A adapter because the Vive facial tracker comes with a Type-C connector. So we will require a USB Type-C to Type-A adapter here to plug it into this router. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the tutorial. Okay, so. Okay, so opening it up, it's actually very tiny. And you bet I'm gonna be 3D printing a mount for this to mount it onto the head strap of your Oculus Quest. Also, for anyone interested, this thing is micro USB. So if you have a little type C to micro USB adapter, you can actually plug this thing in and power it with your elite head strap, which is just insane on a whole new level. However, if you don't have an elite head strap, you will need to plug this thing into some form of a power bank. Look how tiny it is. Just, just look at this. Just look at this. Who needs a Raspberry Pi when you have this tiny little thing? So you can see the power through micro USB there, the two ethernet ports that we will be using to flash the firmware, the USB port that is so important on this side, and a few buttons just for reset and power. Very, very tiny, very, very adorable. Let's plug it right in and get to flashing the firmware. I scratched that. You don't need an ethernet cable. It actually comes with one. <laughs> and the power cable as well. Let's get to flashing this firmware. So what you want to do is you want to access the Virtual Here website. So the Virtual Here website is actually just a website and you want to click into hardware. Now in hardware, you're going to want to scroll down and find the router that we just got. Download the upgrade.bin file and that is actually the software downloading part done. Now for getting it onto the router. So 
So now that we have the firmware file downloaded, we will take the ethernet cable and plug that into our PC instead. Now with our network cable swapped out, the PC should be connected to this router. Make sure your ethernet cable is plugged into the LAN port of the router, by the way. Now that you have your router connected, you want to enter 192.168.8.1. This will bring you to the admin portal of the little router. So, oh, this is actually quite cool. Uh, you want to set some, some form of password. And then what you want to do is go into more settings, advanced, and because this is running OpenWRT, we should just be able to flash firmware on it just like that. The default username will be root and the password will be the password that you created at the very, very beginning. And now we are in the advanced interface. What you want to do from here is go into system, firmware flash, and then for flashing a new firmware image, select the file that we downloaded earlier. Then you just click flash image and we wait. This is exactly why I told you to use a ethernet cable instead of doing this wireless. While you could do this wireless, things can always go incorrectly when you do things wireless. So uh, click proceed. And now the system will flash the firmware. During the flashing process, an LED will flash. Ha ha ha, very funny. But yeah, basically we're waiting for this thing to finish flashing. Perfect. So now the little LED has stopped blinking on the router. In my wireless networks, Cloud Hub has appeared on the list, which is exactly what we were waiting for. So that's perfect. So now you don't need a PC at all. In fact, you can actually unplug the little router from your computer because everything from here on out is done through Wi-Fi. So on your list of networks, you want to select Cloud Hub. The default Wi-Fi password is Cloud Hub 66. So typing that in, you want to connect to the Cloud Hub network and it will say connected, no internet, but you don't need to worry about that at all. So now what we're going to need is we're going to need the Cloud Hub software. So, you know, to configure the entire thing and make it work. So we need to plug our PC back into the internet and download a few things. So while still being connected to the Cloud Hub using Wi-Fi, you want to download the virtual here client. So downloading the client, I'm going to download it for Windows 64 bit and I'm going to launch it and hopefully all going well. There we go. Virtual here, Cloud Hub free edition found. Perfect. So now what we want to do is right click and click properties and then click configure. The configuration window will then ask you for the password. The password is cloudhub666. And then you will be brought to this page. Click part of an existing network, select the frequency, which should only be 2.4, click refresh, find the network, well, your Wi-Fi network, and put in your Wi-Fi password. Then once you click apply, the router will restart and become part of your existing network, meaning you will no longer need to connect to the router itself, but this time just connect to your Wi-Fi like you normally would. So. Now that you have your little router configured and it is showing up on your Wi-Fi network, it's not plugged in using LAN to anything else. It's actually really, really simple from there. Once you have it showing up in the virtual client software, we're just going to plug in the USB cable and hopefully it works. It's turned green. Yes, it's turned green there. Look at that. Look at that. It's showing up. It's showing up. Okay. So then what you want to do is you want to right click and click use this device. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. It's working. It's working. Okay. So now we go into the S, the, the runtime by HTC, and we're going to see if the runtime can see it, right? Clicking on the runtime. The runtime hates me. Okay, guys. So we have everything working. This is absolutely unbelievable. We have everything working. As you can see, it's showing up there. We have the cloud hub connected. I am so unbelievably proud of my insane contraption. Check this out. So we've got the HTC facial tracker right here. This is just being held down by some cable ties right now, but it's being powered by the elite head strap. <laughs> Look at this contraption. <laughs> that is so unbelievable. And it is completely wireless, just as I promised you guys. Well, I mean, there's some wires on it, but they're, they're up here. I mean, what else can we do right now? then hop into Neos VR and try this thing out. You know, that's what you're all here for. We finally have the end result. I made a few mistakes during the recording of this, but we're finally here in the end. Let's jump right in. Okay, so as you can see, nothing is connected to the headset at all. Everything is on top of the headset. It's even being powered by the Elite head strap right now. Uh, let's hop right into Steam VR. Neos VR, here we come. Whew. <laughs> oh, I am so happy right now, guys. Honestly. What are we waiting on? 
Why is Neos turn taking so long to turn on? Imagine my sadness when Neos didn't turn on at all when this was connected. Basically, what ended up happening is this thing worked. Absolutely. It recognized the facial tracker. My PC recognized the facial tracker. It was plugged in. And the thing is, it would kind of work and then kind of wouldn't. And then I thought I fixed it by setting the compatibility mode to Windows 8. And look how happy I was. Uh, but then I put it on and the latency was just so, so horrible. And it's not my network setup that caused the latency, by the way. I have, I have like the perfect network setup. This isn't to flex on you guys or anything. I spent hundreds and hundreds of euro on this network setup to make it just perfect. The latency in the app said about 12 milliseconds, which is actually not bad at all. But it looks like the runtime for the facial tracker thought otherwise, because I would open my mouth and it would just kind of go... So, unfortunately, that didn't work out. And you can tell I'm not satisfied. Of course I'm not satisfied. That's not what we came here for. <sighs> I don't know what I'm going to do now. I, am, I don't want to give up on the mission of making it wireless, but searching the internet, I can't find any other device that would run virtual here unless it's the laptop. But again, throwing a laptop into a bag is cheating. It's not actually making it wireless. This little device is clearly not powerful enough to output whatever the Vive Facial Tracker needs to get outputted. Like, I did not expect the Vive Facial Tracker to require that much data going through it. I am unsatisfied. I, I, I'm completely, completely fine with saying this. I am unsatisfied. That's not the result. Oh yeah, and I bought Virtual here, which was like 50 euro. Because I thought that, hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe buying it would like unlock more bandwidth, but that's just my own stupidity. Don't you guys worry about that. Oh, this is just, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. One of you smart people in the comment section is going to tell me exactly what I did wrong and exactly how to fix this or exactly what I need to purchase to fix it. But unfortunately for now, the conclusion is this isn't usable. It works, but it's not usable if that makes any sense whatsoever. So yeah. That is unfortunately where we end today's video. It wasn't as big of a success as I thought it was going to be from the testing that I did on my laptop. Because again, that worked. That actually worked really, really well. So if you guys want to shove a laptop into your bag, and it doesn't even have to be a good laptop, uh, preferably it would have 5 gigahertz, but it does not even have to be a good laptop. Even a laptop with USB 2.0 runs this thing really well, which is why I'm so confused. Because this thing has USB 2.0. I am just so unbelievably confused as to why this isn't working. Five hours this took me. Five hours of trying to troubleshoot and fix things, and in the end I came up with nothing. But you know what, that's just, sometimes you just get days like that. And the VR community is absolutely unbelievable. Someone is going to think of something, and and we're gonna end up having some, some form of a result. But right now, I need to get back to editing, throw this video out for you guys, because even though it was a failure, I feel like you guys deserve to know the progress, and you guys deserve to know what happened, and. And I feel like this might help some of you find something out, you know, give you a hint, give you a clue or something because I'm, I'm out of ideas, but yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. I know that we're not ending where we would normally end, but unfortunately the bed is all just cluttered with different cables and adapters and stuff. So I can't shove the camera onto it. So we're going to end the video here today. Uh, at least the adapter is a huge, huge success. When it is plugged in wired, it works unbelievably, unbelievably well. So I do recommend you guys check that out down below. But yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like. It was a lot of work. And if you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. But please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that doesn't put a huge ad on your body. And if you guys are not yet part of the community, make sure to join the Discord down below. Make sure to join the Reddit. And if you guys want to be notified by future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.